Hello, my name is Jose Macias and I'm a senior electrical engineer in the dynamics engineering department here at ETAP. Uh, I have been involved in the design and development and implementation of several dynamic models for different types of control system over the past four years here at ETAP. But today, I would like to share with you a demo presentation on the ETAP current transformer saturation tool, which is a topic of interest to many of us, not just in the dynamics business area, but also in the protection and coordination and even arc flash domain, due to the effect that the current transformers or CTs can have in the determination of the fault clearing times. Before we move on, let's go over the presentation's agenda quickly. Uh, we're gonna cover some theoretical background for you to be able to understand what's happening behind the scenes once we start playing around with the tool. Like for example, what are the causes of the CT saturation? And of course, in order to evaluate the CT saturation, we need to know information such as the knee point voltage, the CT equivalent circuit uh, with its magnetizing branch, the hysteresis, plus also the effect of the magnetic remnants on the CT. And of course, as part of this demo presentation, uh, I'm gonna walk you through a couple of examples on how to use the CT saturation tool for different applications based on real life case studies published in different sources. Now, in order to understand how and why a CT saturates, we need to actually understand how it works. When it comes to CT saturation analysis, we need to start all the way from the molecular composition of the ferromagnetic material used in the current transformer core. Such material is composed of a limited amount or number of magnetic dipoles, which are like very small magnets that align back and forth between the positive and negative side between uh, or depending upon the actual instantaneous value of the current and the magnetic field generated by such current passing through the primary winding of the CT. Essentially, the alternating behavior of the current causes an alternating magnetic field which makes those magnets to align and such alignment of the magnetic dipoles is what produces the magnetic flux that flows through the core and through the secondary winding inducing the secondary voltage and of course the secondary current uh, based on the actual burden connected to the CT terminals. The issue with saturation occurs when all those magnetic dipoles are aligned. At that moment, the magnetic flux stops, which causes the induced voltage on the secondary of the CT to drop to zero, and therefore the current to start decaying. Now, how fast that current decays will depend on the actual burden connected to the CT terminals. The burning impedance is composed of the lead wire and the relay impedance. The power factor of the CT burning impedance determines the actual shape of the saturation waveform to an extent, of course. Uh, in the case shown the slide right now, the inductive component of the burning impedance in combination with the winding and lead resistance make up the time constant on the saturated CT which causes the actual secondary current to decay slowly, as you guys can see, after the core has been saturated. If you were to analyze a fault recorded waveform from a relay, you may now be able to recognize the shape of the secondary current and infer the type of burden connected to the CT output. Likewise, most of the microprocessor-based relays nowadays will have a very high power factor impedance, and under those conditions, along with the lead wire and the winding resistance, resistance, of course, the overall CT burning will have a more resistive behavior in which at the moment of the saturation, as you guys can see here on the screen, the secondary uh, CT current would decay much faster to zero until the instantaneous current becomes negative for the next cycle. But of course, as you guys might infer already, the main driver of the whole saturation in current transformer is actually the current passing through the primary winding of that transformer. In that case, the CT saturation can be caused by different components of the fault current, uh, such as the symmetrical or uh, asymmetrical, uh, also known as DC component, as well as the harmonic content of that uh, current passing through the primary side of the CT. So in the current slide, 
uh, illustrates the symmetrical component of the fault current. So when this component, the symmetrical, uh, causes the saturation, we are expected to see its effect very early in the saturated waveform. The image on the left shows the output of the analysis where there is almost no saturation, right? And the image on the right shows the difference between the ideal uh, secondary current, which is nothing but the primary current passing through that CT times the CT ratio versus the actual current, which is saturated or coming out of that CT due to the saturation. As we can observe, the saturation varies as a function of time, but we can clearly see that for this case where the symmetrical current, we're analyzing the symmetrical uh, current, the effect of the saturation is observed at the beginning, at the first cycle, first half to one cycle of the actual instantaneous uh, waveform. Now for the cases where the asymmetrical component of the fault current is to blame for the saturation of the CT, such effect is typically observed later than the symmetrical current or remnant saturation effect, for example. Its effect starts to show up in the raw data waveform during the second cycle of the fault and remains there for, for the next cycles. So what is the remnant and its effect on our CT saturation simulation or analysis? Well, the remnant of the CT is, is nothing but the percent of the core which experiences magnetism or remains magnetized after the current on the primary side of the transformer becomes zero. So the remnants will interact with the magnetic field direction once again, the primary current returns in that CT. The effect of the remnants is short-lived and essentially should basically disappear within a cycle or less. Right, As you guys can see on the screen, uh, different percentages of remnants will affect the actual result and the saturation differently. So uh, the more magnetized the CT core is, you might experience a higher level of saturation. It is important to highlight that ETAP CT saturation tool models uh, models the remnants as a percent of the excitation voltage and it is expressed as an additional component of the flux, which is essentially added as a positive component only. The need point voltage is defined by the IEEE standard C37.110 uh, as the excitation voltage at which a 45 degree line touches the CT excitation curve. Such curve is provided by the manufacturers usually and represent the RMS behavior of the excitation voltage against the excitation current passing through the magnetizing branch of the CT. The knee point uh, of the excitation curve defines the operation point where the CT starts to show a nonlinear behavior due to the magnetic curve saturation. However, saturation per se is not defined at the knee point voltage, but instead is uh, when the excitation current is equal to the 10% of the secondary current of the CT at 20 times its rated value. This definition is uh, specific for ANSI rated CTs. So for example, for the case on the slide where we have a C400 2000 to 5 CT, 20 times its rated secondary current would be 100 amps. Therefore, 10% of it or 10 amps of excitation current would determine the saturation voltage of the CT, which in this case, as you guys can see on the slide, would be around 496, and that's why this CT would be categorized as a C400. Now that we're mentioning terms like excitation voltage and current, it's time to introduce the CT equivalent circuit used for the calculations. As you guys can see on the slide, uh, we have a total secondary current, which is nothing but uh, the primary current multiplied by the CT ratio, which is what we also called as the ideal current on the secondary side of the CT. And we also have the actual current, IS, 
that goes out of the CT terminal towards the relay. And of course, we expect those two to be very close, as close as possible, right? However, the magnetizing branch represented by the excitation current IE starts playing a significant role when the CT becomes saturated. ZV or burden or the burning impedance as mentioned before is comprised of the lead wire resistance for uh, both forward and return path as well as the relay impedance. At this point that we are more familiar with the theory behind the CT saturation and how it is modeled in ETAP, we can switch uh, to the software and start looking at some examples on how to perform some CT saturation analysis. The CT saturation calculator can be accessed through any CT element editor on your wildline diagram through the CT sizing button on the rating page of the CT element editor. Uh, in the CT rating page of the calculator, all the input data will be mapped from the actual CT editor on your wildline diagram. Additionally, uh, some other parameters such as the winding, uh, ohms per turn, and the lead wire resistance are mapped automatically based on the actual turns ratio of your CT. Once we move on to the CT saturation page, we can actually start performing uh, the whole analysis and determining the actual or potential saturation of the CT by entering uh, manually values for the primary side current and the X over R at the fall location. We can start seeing the different waveforms in the tool where the blue one represents the actual ideal current or the total secondary current and the black plots or the black graphs represent the actual currents going out of the uh, CT terminals. Additionally, uh, we have implemented a one cycle filter that will allow you to uh, graphically represent the RMS value for both the ideal and the actual uh, current as well as the excitation current going through the magnetization branch or the magnetizing branch that we show in the equivalent circuit. And basically, the excitation current is nothing but the difference between the ideal and the actual current that goes out of the CT, like we show in the equivalent circuit a couple of minutes ago. Not only can we modify the value of the shear circuit current and the X over R of the system, but also we can also control, for example, the fault inception angle and the asymmetry of the fault current uh, through the offset field that I'm showing right now uh, on the screen. A one per unit offset represents a negative 90 degree fault inception angle for the voltage and therefore um, it would generate the highest asymmetrical current waveform in the positive direction whereas a negative one value per unit would represent a positive 90 degree fault inception angle and you can see that the full current is generated now from the negative direction. If you enter zero as the offset, that would basically represent a zero degree, zero degree for the fault inception angle and it is when the shear circuit current results in the minimum amount of asymmetry since the DC offset is cancelled. So basically you can simulate different type of waveform, different uh, system characteristics and conditions such as the fault current magnitudes and the X over R at the fault location as well as the fault inception angle and evaluate if the, if the CT responds correctly based on the saturation results or observed in the plots. But beside the different system characteristics that I have just discussed with you, uh, we can also change of course the characteristics of the burden connected to that relay or to that CT so for example, like we discussed uh, initially in the presentation, a very high inductive burden would cause the output current of the CT in case of a saturation, of course, to have certain amount of time delay, right? When the saturation occurs, right? However, uh, a very high resistive burden for that CT would show a more rapid decrease in the actual output current when the saturation occurs in the CT core. Now, one of the nice features of this tool is the capability that it has to communicate and basically connect to other ETAP solutions to make the whole analysis more efficient 
and easier for the ETAB users. So for example, the actual Shersik occurring, there can be different type of inputs for that, for which we, of, we offer or we allow you to enter user-defined Shersik occurring and X over R, which is the option that I have been using so far. But also you can basically input the Shersik occurring and the X over R from the system calculations performed in ETAB. Okay, basically either through the calculated option or to import the actual waveform from the transient short circuit analysis. And let's let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Uh, basically, when we select the calculated option from the input type for the full current, we notice how these fields are not editable anymore, they're grayed out. And the same when we switch to the CT saturation page, because these values right here come all the way from the ETAP engine when running the calculations for that specific bus where the CT is located. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So for that, we simply need to switch to the ETAP uh, star protection and coordination module, and of course, fold the specific bus where that current transformer might be connected to. And on the right-hand side, toolbar for the star module, we just need to run or execute the calculations from the third button. And basically, once the calculations are done, based on the specific uh, characteristics and parameters that you enter in the static case, the data is updated in the other current relay connected to the current transformer, as we can see under the TCCKA tab for both symmetrical and asymmetrical. And based on this data, the CT will obtain this data once we launch the CT saturation calculator from the CT editor button. Okay, so as we can see, the value for uh, the CT sizing for calculator, we have the actual value obtained from the bus, and the X over R is calculated internally based on the asymmetrical and symmetrical uh, components of the Shersik current. Now, for the third option, for the input of the current, for the input waveform, we have to perform uh, what is called a transient shear circuit analysis for which ETAP uh, provides you a module connected to the IC61363 standard for the calculations of the transient shear circuit currents. So for that, we can just simply go to the uh, shear circuit module and under the static case, you need to be basically selecting the IC standard for which you have different uh, parameters for the plot options, such as the plot time, the actual inception angle, and if you want to plot a plot or not, all the three phases. So for these cases, let's let's plot all the three phases. So we'll see the actual effect on the different phases for the CT saturation, and let's plot 0.3 seconds. And let's perform the 61363 IC calculations. So once we've done that, again, we can bring our CT saturation calculator and under the CT sizing page, select import waveform option, which we can select the actual plot database for the Shersik occurrence in our project folder. So as you can see, you might have uh, several uh, plots for the different bosses that you folded. So this could be a, a considerable amount of uh, plot databases, right, depending on the number of bosses that you selected. But for that, we have also created a filter to only show the results or the plot databases for those, for that bus where this specific current transformer is connected to. So now that we have selected already the plot database file and we load, we load the plots, we have the different phases, phase A, B, and C for a fault on the bus that's connected or where the CT is connected for this example. So once we select the specific plot database and the specific phase, uh, we can simply go to the CT saturation page and we'll have those results plotted uh, in our CT saturation calculator. So you can basically enable or disable the results, not just for phase A, but you can also show phase B and phase C. So you could see how the saturation is different depending, depending on the actual phase that you perform the calculations on because the, the, the fault inception angle is different, right, for each one of the phases.
So as you can see right now, probably phase A uh, will be greater impacted by the saturation due to the high asymmetry of the Scherzinger current through the phase A. So as we can see for phase B, the saturation is slightly lower and for phase C also pretty similar to phase B. Another very useful feature that we have rec recently added to this tool is the capability to export to Excel uh, all the plots, uh, including the saturation and excitation plots that are generated from the CT saturation tool for further analysis if required. Now, moving on to the last example of today's demo, we're going to talk about the CT sizing logic for the CT saturation tool. And specifically, we're going to use an example from the reference, one of the references that was used for this presentation and for the development of the tool where we're going to have a C800 2005 CT, but on the 1500 to 5 tab, so something that you guys need to pay attention to is that E tab does not support multi-ratio or tabs in the CTs. So if we're going to use a different tab than the actual rated for this multi-ratio CT, we need to adjust the actual standard burden for the calculations, as you guys will see in the next slide. So we'll have 12.9, sorry, 19.349 uh, kiloamps as the primary fault uh, passing through that CT and XRR of 3.48. So based on the equation for the CT sizing logic, which can be found in the references and also in the ETAB health file, we need to determine the actual value or the maximum value for that uh, CT, for the burden of that CT that can support before starting to get saturated more than what it's allowed. So like I mentioned, the actual standard burden of the CT needs to be adjusted to the actual uh, tab that's being used of uh, 1500 to 5. So instead of being 8 ohms, since it was a C800 CT, it has to be 8 ohms, the standard burden. So based on the calculations, from the CT sizing logic equation uh, times the adjusted standard burden, we have a maximum allowable CT burden of 2.073 ohms, right? Which of course, after we split between the actual lead wiring impedance and the CT winding impedance, we only have around 1.07 ohms allowable for the relay burden. So at this point, we can actually compare against ETA so as you guys can see, we have already matched the input data from the example for the 1500 to 5 CT with the adjusted standard burden of 6 ohms instead of 8 ohms. And of course, the input Scherzinger current and XORR are also matching. So as you guys can see, when a higher value of relay burden is entered, the actual CT sizing logic is implemented, letting the ETAB user know what is the total allowable burden value and the actual allowable relay burden to be connected to that CT in order to avoid saturation. To summarize today's presentation, uh, the ETAB CT saturation tool allows you to perform CT saturation analysis based on different components such as the symmetrical and asymmetrical for the surgical current or the burden power factor as well as the effect of the remnants. Additionally, the knee point voltage is basically not, doesn't need to be specified according to the power system relay committee model which is the one implemented in ETA. And different options are provided regarding the actual input of the short circuit current, such as the user-defined, calculated, or imported waveform from transient short circuit. For future releases of this tool, uh, different models, as well as different time-saving features are being, are being worked on. So stay tuned for uh, more information and more features about this tool. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to your questions.